let's take a second and think about things that move in a circle. Anything that moves in a circular path whatsoever. The easiest thing to think of would be, what well, if I was holding a string with a rock attached to it and I was just throwing that in a circle. Shwee, shwee, shwee. Throwing that rock around in a circle. The rock wants to go tangential. In other words, that rock actually wants to break. That rock would want to break. Let's get a little... Da, 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 da. Let's draw our tangential line. That rock would want to break and travel in a straight line direction if it were to be traveling in a circle, tangential to the circle. That's what that rock would want to do. So the thing is, the rock doesn't want to move in a circle. If you had a rock attached to a rope and you're swinging in a circle, it doesn't want to. It wants to go in this straight line direction. But something is actually acting on that rock and making it travel in the circle. And that's what we're talking about in this unit. It doesn't want to do this. It's changing direction, which means you've changed velocity. So if you have an acceleration, then you also have a force. So we established in the last unit that there is a force in these problems. If something's traveling in a circle, there must be some force keeping it in this circle. If there's an acceleration, there's a force. So this unit is on force centripetal, our centripetal force. And so the unit, the equation is nothing but MAC. It's just MA, and then since we're talking about centripetal, we throw the C on there. F equals MA. Geez, there's nothing new about that. Well, we can throw one more thing on there. We can say, I usually end up writing this. What does A stand for? Well, centripetal acceleration is V squared over R. So what's bad is I'm bad to always write it out like this, and then I end up having to back up and write MAC most of the time. Anyway, this is our next big uh, formula right here. For something to move in a circle, there must be a force. It could be a rope. Let's go through and look at some objects. <laughs> Let's call this things that equal mv squared over r. Things that equal mv squared over r. Well, if it's a rock attached to a rope, then it's the tension. You've got a tension equal to mv squared over r. That is probably the most common situation, something attached by a rope or something. Uh, what about a car in a curve? What about if this was a car in a curve? What holds a car on the road? What force would hold a car on the road? Well, it's friction would hold that car on the road. So we can come back and say friction or mu n would be equal to mv squared over r. Now, depending on where at you're in physics, there's a bunch of equations that equal mv squared over r. Oh, what about in the case of the planets themselves? We have an equation to refer to the attraction between the planets. That force is known as big G, M1, M2 over R squared, and it would be equal to MV squared over R. Oh, Mr. Cole, that's a crazy looking equation. It's Newton's universal gravitation. Any two objects with mass attract each other. So when you think about here is the sun, and here's little old earth out here rotating, why are we rotating? It's because of this gravitational force between M1 and M2. Now, this is what's neat about this situation. The earth's mass would actually, M2 would actually cancel out of this equation. But anyway, oh, what about in the case of a proton? An electron rotating around each other. Well, we've got an equation for that too. K, Q1, Q2 over R squared equals MV squared over R. Now, you're not to the point, this will be in like chapter 15 of physics, you'll do this. But the foundations you're learning start now. Oh, you'll even learn this equation at one point. This is for magnetic fields. QVB equals MV squared over R. What I'm trying to get across is this. There are a lot of things that equal mv squared over R. Right now, for the most part, for you, 
it's pretty much going to deal with this. Now, there is one special case for things that equal mv squared over r. And that special situation is what we'll call, let's write it like this. And I've pretty much finished this chapter here in a second. Things that move in a vertical circle. So in other words, things that move in a vertical circle. And the only way I know to do that would be to rotate the camera up, which means I'll probably never get it back to where I want it. But something rotating in a vertical circle, which means I'm going to just completely wreck everything and turn the camera back at me. In other words, something like this stopwatch rotating like this. This is a vertical circle. To you, you're watching it right now. you got to look. We've got a couple different positions. The bottom of the swing and the top of the swing are two different positions. I want you to look at something. At the bottom of the swing, the rope is holding this stopwatch in a circle. If you're spinning it, I can't do this without smacking something. Ah! But I want you to think about for a second. What if we pause it? Bam! Right at the very top. I've got one question. Is the weight helping this move in a circle or working against it? If you look at the top of the circle, the weight is actually helping to pull it towards the center of the circle. Whereas at the bottom, the weight is actually working against you. The weight is actually pulling away from the center of the circle. So this brings us up to something. Let's kind of address this situation, the top and the bottom of a circle. Wow, and I probably should have never have done this because now I'm probably going to be out of focus. Yeah, figured such a list of problems I create for myself. That's hilarious. How'd I do that? Let's take a look at a vertical circle real quick. Need me a cup one more time. So we're going to get us a cup here. Let's draw us a circle. Oh, by this point, if you've been watching these videos, you've just been keeping a round object nearby for this very purpose. So we've got us a circle here. Of course, I had a ruler, but I decided to throw it in the floor while doing all this. So there's my circle. Let's kind of fill it in a little bit. My camera's all crooked now. It's got me completely out of sorts. Oh, this is going to be a great looking circle. I'm really feeling it. I want to specifically look, though, at two places. I want to look at the top of a vertical circle, and I want to look at the bottom of this vertical circle. I want to look at the top and the bottom of this vertical circle. Because you see, I want you to do something. At the top of the circle, let's look at this centripetal force. This centripetal force means center seeking, which means it's always pointing towards the center of the circle. Let's look at three locations here on this. Well, at the top of the circle, I want you to look. The weight is actually, if you had a rope, look at this. The tension and the weight are in the same direction. So at the top of a vertical circle, you've got T plus mg equal to mv squared over r. So this is at the top of a circle, T plus mg. Now I want you to look at something. At the bottom of this circle, the weight is actually going the opposite direction. So is the weight helping this object at the bottom? No, it's actually working against it. The equation for the bottom of a circle, instead of plus mg, we'll just write minus mg equals mv squared over r. So here's our equation for the top and the bottom of the circle. Well, at this point, you might be saying, well, what about this side over here of the circle? At this side, the weight is actually perpendicular, which means over at this point, it's got nothing to do with it. So at this point, on this side, it'd just be T equals MV squared over R, which would be your normal problem. All right, now, you may work a problem that has a problem where something's at an angle at any position in the circle. And I'll make a separate video just for that, not on this case. But anyway... This is all I need you to do right now. Well, it's funny we're actually finished with Chapter 7. I'm ready to actually go work some problems at this point. 
So what we've established at this point is for something to move in a circle, there must be a force. You could work it as simple as force, centripetal force is equal to MAC. You may go ahead and substitute and write MV squared over R. Possible. You might, instead of force, write, maybe it's a rope. If it's a rope, we'll write tension equals MV squared over R. If it's a car going in a circle around the highway, we'll write mu n equals mv squared over r. But in every case, we've got to establish something is equal to mv squared over r. If you've got something moving in a vertical circle, at the top, we'd write t plus mg equals mv squared over r. At the bottom of that circle, we would write t minus mg equals mv squared over r. Now, there is a special situation called weightlessness. Have you ever jumped a hill a little too fast in your car and felt your stomach kind of go, Ugh, that little queasy feeling? That little weightless feeling occurs at the top of the roll. And so what happens is up here at the very top, if you go just the right speed, you won't feel any tension. When you fail to feel a tension or a force, that's when you feel weightless which means all that happens in the case of weightlessness is you've just got mg equal to mv squared over r. Your m's cancel each other. So if you ever read a problem that says something about somebody experiencing weightlessness, I'm going to write that right under this. Weightless. Somebody is experiencing weightlessness at the top of a circle. That just means that the tension has gone to zero so that you're just left with mg equals mv squared over r. And so this pretty much concludes this whole chapter. I'm kind of 12 minutes in the video right now, so I'm actually going to stop it in here, and then I'm going to come back and do a part, a part two video and a part three using the equations you see listed out in this video. But anyway, we'll come back to that in a second. Thank you for watching.